Shalom. Kahalayim la Yahwa Bahasham Yahwa Shai Bahasham Rechak Wadash. Double honors unto our apostles and elders a great millstone that rule well. Much peace and blessings to all you sense of Akim out there that's pushing this 100% true with all sincerity, faith, and with charity. This is your brother Ash from the Great Millstone Miami Camp coming back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Bahasham Rechakwadash. In this lesson, I want to speak on visualizing the victory. We have to visualize the victory. We have to see ourselves being saved. We have to see salvation. All right. And what I mean by that is you have to be able to, uh, you know, first and foremost in this truth, a big part of this truth you know, that our apostles and elders taught us and told us and say often one major thing that you have to have in this truth is vision. Okay. The apostle Gabar speaks on that a lot, especially when you read the scriptures, which, you know, there's no pictures, there's, there's, there's no drawings with the scriptures. It's, it's just words, it's written. But you have to be able to read these words and visualize them in your mind with your mind's eye. Okay, you, you, you're supposed to be able to read these scriptures and create an illustration with your uh, spiritual imagination. Okay. And you must be able to put yourself in that illustration okay you, because these scriptures we're supposed to be able we we must be able to apply them to ourselves first and foremost when you when you're reading the scriptures and ultimately the whole point of of this truth which uh the apostle Gabar always says the most important part of this truth is finishing and finishing you finishing your course that's what's going to get you safe that's what's going to get you delivered as Yahweh Shai said he that the uh endure into the end the same also shall be saved so we are supposed to be able to visualize us enduring to the end and ultimately being saved being delivered All right, so that's what I want to speak on in this lesson. Low willing, it's not uh, long. It's just uh, going to be quick, straight, and to the point. All right, we must visualize the victory. And I want to start, this is Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Okay, and when you go into this word vision... In the Hebrew, it's a chazawan. Chazawan, which is a vision, vision, oracle, prophecy, divine communication. All right, vision. It says a dream. Oh, 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 the Strong's definition says what? A sight in parentheses mentally. Okay. So mental sight. That's mental vision. It says a dream, revelation, or oracle. All right. This is a the lexicon. It says a, a divine vision spoken of a di divine vision or dream, specifically a vision from the Most High respecting future events, prophetic vision. 
All right, and Lord willing, we are the prophets of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. That's who we uh, humbly yet boldly proclaim ourselves to be. Start with our apostles and elders of Great Millstone and brothers are now. We are the prophets of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. So we must have vision. A prophet's job is to foretell future events. And the reason we're so passionate about the things that we preach is because we can actually see it. We can actually see all hell breaking loose here in Babylon the Great and throughout the world. We can see Esau, the so-called white man who is the devil that the Bible speaks of. First off, we can clearly see that he's the devil. You know, when we come into this truth, your whole perspective of life changes, which your perspective, your perspective, Per perception is everything the way you look at at the world your outlook the way you look at certain things determines everything else what separates us from everyone else in this world is our perception we don't see this this world like everyone else sees we don't look at the so-called white man the way everyone else looks at him the way the rest of our people look at him when you come into this truth you see him for who he truly is you see the 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 his image for what it truly is the image of the beast his whole system is wicked all right, you see these these women for who they truly are. You you see uh, his false image of of who he calls uh, Jesus Christ to truly be. That that fake image. You you see the Lord for who he truly is, as a so called black man, a righteous so called black man. Start with the heavenly Father and His Son. You see two thirds of our people for who they truly are. You see the prophets for who they truly are, and so forth and so on. And that gives you an upper hand on, uh, on uh, you know, it gives you an advantage that no one else has. That's why when the whole world shut down in 2020, we didn't bug out like the rest of the people did. Because we, we saw it for what it truly was. We understand that these things are prophecy. And we saw it coming before it happened. Just like we see the so-called white man coming down with great wrath, for real, for real. And ultimately uh, coming down with that karagma. We see the economy collapsing. The dollar being done away with. We see ultimately uh, all hell break loose, famine, destruction. Ultimately, America being destroyed with uh, nuclear missiles at, uh, at the cusp of World War III. We see all these things. And that's vision, which is a necessary component to enduring in this truth. Because without it, as we read, the people perish. Okay, you can have uh, and you can have a, a straight up vision, right? The most I can give you a vision while you you know in in your sleep state you can also have visions while you awake you, you uh, had cases of you read the scriptures where certain men fell into trances while they were awake and the most i showed them uh, a, a vision you know but for the most part it happens when you sleep which that's how the most i deals with his prophets but you also have mental vision. We, we, you don't have to have the Lord don't have to physically, you know, give you a straight up vision of of all hell breaking loose and the missiles coming and the chariots, which he, he does to brothers. But you can you can see it through your mind's eye. You know, that's why Yahweh Shai said, uh, he said uh, he told Thomas, he said, you, you believe because you, you, you see, but blessed are those that believe and have not seen.
Roughly paraphrasing. We haven't seen a lot of things physically, but we can see it spiritually. So we can see all these things take place and ultimately. Being as the hopeful elect, you must be able to see yourself enduring to the end and being delivered, being beamed up into those ships, changed into those everlasting, righteous, immortal bodies. Because what I wanted to mention off starting this video, I didn't mention it, but even in the world, you have uh, top athletes and, uh, you know, different people like you have this guy, uh, David Goggins. He was like, you know, a super, it was just a Jake, super badass Jake. He's like the only person in the world to, to compete. I mean, to complete all these different uh, military type training exercises. I forget the names of them, but he's like the only one to, to complete him. And one of the things which which, which uh, inspired me to do this lesson, I was watching one clip from him. He was speaking on uh, one thing he does is he visualizes, he can see the uh, him completing a certain, uh, you know, like marathons and you got the, uh, which I'm not saying he did one of those, but you got something like what they call the Iron Man, which he probably did that too. You got the Iron Man triathlons and things of that nature, like these different obstacle type courses and things that people go through to you know, it's like an endurance uh, sport, different endurance sports and, you know, marathon runs and these things, they, they're they to push your physical capabilities to the max, right? But that requires a strong mind, first and foremost. Of course, you have to have a strong body, but like they say, mind over matter, right? And he said one thing that helps him complete these uh in different exercises and things that he does is he's able to see himself completing it before he even starts it he can see he can actually visualize himself completing the task and not only him i believe uh muhammad ali said the same thing or mike tyson i remember seeing a clip i believe it was mike tyson said the same thing he you know before he go into the ring he could he could see himself uh he could see himself winning and there's many other athletes that, that said the same thing and and that that is a that's a part of having a strong mind that's all a part of having vision okay when you're able to actually see yourself winning before you even start that's confidence that that that's you're you basically spiritually righteously uh psyching yourself out like you have a lot of people they 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 don't uh you know they don't succeed they fail at different things why because they uh self sabotage they they see themselves failing before they even start and that throws off their their mind so when they you know, they get in the ring. I believe uh, Mike Tyson said that. He said when he got it, when you get in the ring with people, he will stare them down. And if you if you see them flinch, if you see them look away for the the the, the smallest second, he knew right there he got them. Because that person just uh, psyched himself out by by taking his eyes off the prize, by showing that that weakness. Which we can't we can't do that in this truth. Oh, uh, Yahweh Shai said what? He that put up his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom. So we have to be uh, laser focused on completing this this thing of ours, on winning. All right. And and uh, we say this humbly, but you must have confidence. That, that that the Lord is going to deliver you. 
He's not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which he showed to his name. You got to believe that uh, he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So give diligence to make your calling and election sure. We have to take these scriptures and apply them to our lives. Yes, we, we're preaching and, and, and helping to gather the elect. Through the preaching of this word, or as the scriptures say, faith cometh by hearing, right? That's how the elect are sealed. Hearing, hearing the gospel, the good news uh, of salvation and believing on it. You, and we have to believe on it for ourselves. As thou faith, have it to thyself. You know, I'm talking to myself first. So we got to see ourselves receiving those crowns, man. All right. I want to not end off with this. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 2. And this is an actual vision. Like an actual, you know, we, we're speaking about having spiritual vision and seeing things with your mind's eye. With your third eye. But this is an actual vision that uh the Lord gave to Ezra, which he had different, which was a major prophet. He had different visions, just like other prophets have. You fall asleep, and the Lord will show you something in, in the future. And this is a, a vision that the Lord gave Ezra of what we call the, the crowning ceremony. This is a vision of what's going to take place in the near future. This hasn't taken place yet. It's going to take place. But Ezra saw it as if it, it already took place. That makes me think of uh, Revelation chapter 12 and uh, 13, I believe. Matter of fact, let me, I don't want to butcher it. Let me run to it real quick and I'll come back. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Who is that talking about? The elect. Starting with the 144,000. It says they overcame him. Who's the him? Esau, Edom, the devil. Who's getting ready to come down with great wrath. But the Lord said we already have the victory. Lord, will we be that of that number? Which we, we must believe that we're of that number if we're doing what we supposed to do. That's the faith, right? We must believe this. The Lord said it's already written. The victory is already done. We have already overcome. We're just uh, playing. We're just acting it out in real time. Okay. It says overcame. Not and they will overcome him. It says and they overcame. So. Oh, it, it, we're just waiting on it to be made manifest. The elect will win no matter what. So knowing that, giving and all you know, coupling that with give you know, uh, giving diligence to make your calling and election sure, we should be able to visualize ourselves being of that number, and actually going through this, which we're about to read right now. This is Second Ezra chapter two. In verse 44, so I asked the angel, says, sir, what are these? Oh, Salakia, Salakia, I'm jumping the gun. Second Ezra 2 and uh, uh, 42. Second Ezra 2 and 42, I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs, which we know Mount Zion is a people before a place, right? Talking about the Israelites. And this is talking about the elect of the nation of Israel. Starting with the 144,000. Those that are slated to receive salvation. This is after they are delivered from the destruction of Babylon the Great via the, the chariots. Of the Most High. This is after 
all hell breaking loose, Jacob's trouble, Esau coming down with that karagma, coming down with great wrath, Revelation 12, 12. Okay, which is getting ready to happen very soon. This, what we're reading right now, is getting ready to take place very soon. And we, we could be part of this number. All right. Verse 43, and in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns. And was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. And that's talking about Yahweh Shai, the head of the of the body, the body being the elect of the nation of Israel. You know, starting with the hundred and forty-four thousand. Yahweh Shai is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and Lord willing, we of that number, we're going to be a, a nation of kings and priests, and we're going to rule with Him for all eternity. That's why He's saying crowns upon their heads he's going to be the top king and we're going to be kings and priests underneath him in our order all right verse 44 so i asked the angel and said sir what are these he answered and said unto me these be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of the most high now are they crowned and receive palms. Okay, these are they that I've put off the mortal clothing and, and put on the immortal. And that's ultimately talking about us, no one we be of that number being changed into a godly fashion. Shedding these corruptible, wretched program to sin and go off bodies that we have and having our spirits transferred into a righteous body a godly body that's programmed to do righteousness and that even starts now because we're putting off the 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 works of the flesh right now we're putting off this corruptible mind frame and, and corruptible way of life right now even within these corruptible bodies and we're putting on the immortal the uh righteous ways of yahweh basham yahweh shai and, and walking after the spirit right now and so this is our you know for the elect this is already taking place this is a process okay that's why it says these be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal so it starts now, right? And have confessed the name of the Most High. And that's what we're doing right now. We're confessing the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai right now in, in, in this time. Lord, when we be of that number and we endure to the end, we're going to be crowned and receive palms, which is a representation of, of victory, overcoming. Verse 46, then said I unto the angel, what young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, it is the son of the most high whom they have confessed in the world. Right. So we're confessing the most high and his son, Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. So the elect are going to stand stiffly for the name of Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shai. So that's the cut on anyone saying the name don't matter. That's the access code to the kingdom of heaven. So this is Ezra seeing these men being crowned. And, you know, this was over 2,000 years ago. But he's seeing it as if it, it was happening at that time. Why? Because that was a vision of something to happen in the future. So when we read this, and guess what? Ezra's was there. He may not have saw himself, 
But Ezra's is most definitely of, of that number. So when this actually takes place, Ezra's going to be there and he's going to receive a crown. So just like Ezra saw this vision taking place, he saw this event taking place. He's actually going to be there. So when we read these scriptures, when we read this and, and we visualize this event taking place, we have to be able to visualize ourselves actually being there. Actually being a part of this. Okay. And, and Lord willing, we are, man. Lord willing, we are. And Lord willing, we do the things that's required of us so that we, we can actually uh, partake in this. And a part of that is visualizing the victory. Okay. So, Lord willing, that was edifying. It's just something I wanted to speak on through the Spirit. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rechakwadash. Until the next one, Shalom.